morning. My name is Henry Want, and I'm the Director of Facilities Management for Littleton Regional Healthcare. Uh, my, role, my role here as, as part of the production is to explain to you a little history background as to why LRH got into the biomass thermal energy producing business to begin with. In 2008, Littleton Regional Healthcare investigated biomass technology as, as a solution to, uh, for cost savings for oil consumption. Historically, Littleton Regional Healthcare burnt about 230,000 gallons of number two fuel oil on a yearly basis at an average cost of about three quarters of a million dollars. The, the challenge was the fact that we, the thermal energy that we produce is steam energy. And at the time, a lot of the biomass technology was focused on uh, heating hot water. So even though we decided at the time the technology wasn't ready, we, we kept our ideas and thoughts on the shelf and in 2012, we were approached by Dan Hebert, along with Messerschmitt Boilers, and part of their uh, solution was to provide us with a couple of steam boilers that would be supplied by biomass fuel, which would be uh, hardwood bowl chip biomass. So with, with, that, with that in place, um, Littleton Regional Healthcare went into uh, the, the decision-making process. Not, not an easy feat when, um, you know, in today's world of bureaucracy. However, Littleton Regional Healthcare uh, decision-making didn't take very long when they realized that with a $2.7 million investment, the payback was going to be 5.7 years. So with the technology in place, we moved forward with our project in 2013. And it took one year to, uh, from start to finish to complete and go online. 2014, January, is when we lit our first match in our boilers. And, and from there, the, um, everything has been nothing but pluses as I said earlier, our annual cost for oil was three quarters of a million dollars a year. The first year we went online with the, the biomass technology, thermal energy cost was $480,000. So we were able to almost, almost cut our annual cost in half. This past year, our cost savings has actually been about four hundred and forty thousand dollars. That, in unison with uh, something that LRH was unaware at the time, was the uh, ability to require what's called reimbursements from utility companies for thermal one renewal energy. So, so with, with the revenue that we have gained from that aspect, that which was unplanned and the cost savings that we've acquired by burning wood chips versus oil. To date, Littleton Regional Healthcare has saved a little under a million dollars in energy costs in two years. So you, you can see that uh, the decision to do biomass was, was a very good one. And also it was a really good decision for our local um, wood suppliers here in the area. Rather than paying out that money in, in fuel energy for oil, we are actually providing a quarter of a million dollars for a revenue source for, uh, for our wood manufacturers here in the North Country. We uh, had to also consider keeping number two fuel oil. I, I, I think you may have heard me mention at the beginning of, of, our, of our program here that um, Littleton Regional Healthcare was very eager to, to embark on, on biomass technology as, as our number one uh, fuel source for thermal energy. With that said, we, we also had to be m very mindful of the fact that, as, as with anything else mechanical, um, it, the, the bio, there are times where the biomass plant 
has to be shut down for either uh, annual maintenance or emergency type repairs because there isn't any system that anyone has in place that goes without without maintenance. So, so with that said, the um, the Littleton Regional Healthcare kept two of their three Cleaver Brook boilers that burn number two fuel, and we feel very comfortable with the fact that we still have those in place. Um, number two fuel and in, in what we had previously was very reliable, but economically the the biomass plant was the way to go, the, the therm to create thermal energy. In uh, a very short while, um, Mr. O'Connor will be um, taking you on a tour of our biomass plant. Uh, uh, Dick Blanchard, our boiler technician, um, I say that with, with kind of a, a, a chuckle because Dick does a lot more for us here than boiler technician, but that's his title. He's been very instrumental in um, the design of our biomass plant along with, with Mr. Broder and also the maintenance of a biomass plant. Dick has a, a long history of being involved in the biomass industry so he's been uh, a big plus for, for us here at Littleton Regional Healthcare. Keep, keep in mind when you look at the uh, tour that Dick gives you today that there are a lot of pots and pieces that come in play with, with producing thermal energy in the biomass world. It is very heavy as far as to maintain cleanliness of the plant. As, as, you, as you take your tour with Mr. O'Connor and Dick Blanchard, be mindful of the fact that how clean the plant is because it's not done very easily because of the dust and so forth that accumulates when you're using wood. All of you folks at home with wood stoves know what I'm talking about. Hi, I'm Dick, I'm Dick Blanchard. Uh, I operate the boilers here at Littleton Regional Healthcare. Uh, my background is um, actually wood-fired power plants. Uh, I operated wood-fired power plants for about 15 years. Uh, I've been with Littleton Regional Healthcare for approximately 10 years, and we added a biomass system uh, about a year and a half ago. Hi, my name is Rodney Allen. I'm a driver for AB Logging and Trucking. And we deliver the hardwood bowl chips here to the Littleton Hospital, and they use it for heat. And the bowl chips is just, just the very mi middle of the tree, the good part of the tree. We take our delimmer and we peel all the limbs off, and we take the tops off, and we run it through the chipper, and we bring it down here, and we unload it with our live floor, or walking floor. Uh, the floor unloads by itself, it's hooked up on a hydraulic pump on the truck and you pull the lever and it pushes the load right out into their bin and they have an auger system that runs it into their boiler and they burn it and make heat. Okay, this is my live floor and it runs, all these metal slats are hooked up onto three pistons underneath and every third one is hooked to a piston and every piston pushes back and then they go individually one at a time back the other way and then when they hit the end they all push at once and that's what walks the load out and dumps it into their bin. This here is a, a 28 ton load which is a legal load for the weight of our truck and it doesn't fill it completely but as you can see and this will last them a few days, like in the summertime when it's warm. Uh, Dickie said they burn about eight tons, but in the wintertime when it turns cold, they'll burn uh, 17 to 19 ton a day. So we bring them a load almost every other day in the, in the coldest part of the winter. And in the bottom of the bin, we have two screw augers, which pull the wood out onto the delivery belt. Um, typically these systems have one screw auger that goes back and forth the entire length of the bin. Uh, because of my knowledge of wood, the wood industry, 
um, because of the power plant experience I had, I asked for two augers. Uh, the reason being, one of, at some time or another, one of these augers is gonna break down, and when it does, you're on oil. So the price of the second auger will be paid for within a couple of days of burning oil if that one auger ever was to ever break down. So um, we do have two augers. Like I said, most of these Measuresmith systems uh, currently have one. And so what happens is um, the system is all automated. There's an electronic eye on a metering bin um, out in the boiler room. When that laser sees each other, it says it's time to bring me wood. So the system starts up, it automatically pulls wood out onto the belt. The belt fills the bin. When the sensors stop seeing each other, it says stop, stop the belt, stop the wood delivery. So that's really a really basic, really simple system. Um, it's been very, very um, dependable so far. We've been in operation for a little bit more than a year and a half. And um, <clears throat> in that time frame, we've had very, very little downtime. Um, we, do, um, we do periodic maintenance uh, on a monthly basis, on a daily basis, and on a yearly basis. We actually just got through our, our wood inspections, our boiler inspections last week. Uh, so the boilers were down for about five days. It takes three days to cool the boiler off to a temperature where you can actually get into the boiler and clean it. And then we have a boiler inspector come and inspect the internals of the boiler to make sure it's operating properly. So that's a, that's a yearly thing that we do. So what we have here is we have two wood-fired steam boilers. Uh, the smaller one is the closest one to us. It's 150 horsepower. The further one away is a 200 horsepower steam boiler. We operate the boilers at 80 pounds steam pressure. Um, the breaching is on the top of the boiler, so the exhaust from the boiler comes out the top and into this electrostatic precipitator. What the electrostatic precipitator does, it, uh, it scrubs all the flue gas free from particulate matter. So fly ash, any fly ash that's in the flue gas stream gets separated in that box. And it does that electrically. What happens is um, when the flue gas enters the box, it is electrically charged uh, with a negative charge. Inside, there's panels that hang down that are positively charged, so that negatively charged particle attracts to the positively charged plate. It then drops down to the bottom into the uh, auger, which drops it into that ash bin that's down below. So we collect, we collect ash in that uh, tipper hopper down there, the yard and a half tipper hopper. Right now in the summertime, we only have to empty that hopper about once a month. Um, in the winter time, it'll be every two weeks because we burn more wood in the winter than we do in the, in the summer. Um, uh, in the summertime, we typically run a small boiler all summer because we do actually have a reheat loop here that uh, does require some load. Right now, I'm on the big boiler and I'll run the big boiler straight through until March and probably sometime in December Whenever it gets cold enough, I'll fire up the little boiler to help out. So in the dead of winter, we run both boilers. In the summer, we run just one, just a smaller one. Okay, so as the wood chips come up the belt, they go into what we call a metering bin. That's the blue bin that's, that's down below. Um, in that blue bin, there's some, some augers that run back towards us. Those are called metering augers. The metering augers, the speed of the metering augers is based on steam pressure which is all operated through our program logic controller, our computer down on the wall. So anything above 80 pounds, those augers are gonna slow down. Anything below 80 pounds, the augers will speed up to try to maintain 80 pound steam pressure. Uh, the black trough down there, there's more augers, those are called stoker augers. And what those augers do is they run at full speed all the time, just trying to get rid of the wood chips and push it into the boiler so that you don't have burn back so that the fire doesn't actually burn back up into those augers and catch the bin on fire. So that's just moving wood all the time, just trying to get rid of the wood. Um, this wood is 45% moisture, so it's very, very wet. I mean, this, these, these chips are coming direct off the of landing um, locally, 
We contract with AB Logging up in Lancaster. We have for three years, and they will supply our wood chips for a three-year period. So they they chip the wood directly to us. You're looking at 40 to 45 percent moisture, which makes you wonder how do you burn wood at 45 percent moisture? They do it with air. <clears throat> you can burn anything <clears throat> if you have enough air. You can burn almost anything. So they have uh, under fire air and over fire air. They call it so. You're pumping air underneath the grates. The grates have holes in them. So you've got air coming up through the grates, and then you have nozzles pointing at the grates. That's your overfire air. So between the underfire and the overfire, you get a, a lot of air pumped into that boiler, and um, the boiler temperatures range somewhere in the 1500 degree range. So. Can you see up in there? If I do that? Okay. okay, so keep the chips burning in suspension, if you will. In the back, you can see that the stoker augers, there's two stoker augers back there that push wood out onto that grate. And um, those are the ones that are going wide open, just trying to keep, get rid of the wood so that the fire doesn't actually burn back up into that tube and catch the metering bin on fire. Uh, this this uh, combustor is completely lined with, with uh, fire retardant brick. And um, so basically this is where all the burning takes place. And above us is where the boiler sits. So the flue gas comes up, up uh, towards the front of the boiler and there's a two inch round hole right above us, a two foot round hole right above us, and that's where all the flue gas goes out through and actually heats the water inside the boiler. So the fly ash, the fly ash is collected in these yard and a half tipper dumpsters and um, the fly ash is a lot like it's a lot like talcum powder, very very light. And um, let me get you some of it out here so I can show it to you. See, it's very very light and fluffy, and that's that's the stuff that would normally be going out into your atmosphere if we weren't collecting it through this electrostatic precipitator. So, as far as the environment's concerned, we're actually uh, doing the environment a favor by burning wood versus oil because oil you actually can pollute the air more with oil than we are with this wood chips 99.9% .9 of particulate matter is removed with this electrostatic precipitator there's other systems out there that collect fly ash that we could have used which uh, a bag house is one example and a bag house is not as efficient at moving removing fly ash as the electrostatic precipitator so even though this this unit itself is $250,000. Uh, the hospital opted to go with electrostatic precipitator because it is, is the best thing for the environment. And um, we certainly don't want to hurt the environment. So, uh, like I said, we, we uh, collect about one of these every two weeks in the summer, uh, maybe a little bit more in the winter. So, uh, up there we have a, we call it an induced draft fan. So it's an ID fan. The induced, draft, the induced draft fan puts a negative on the boiler at all times. So you're pulling, you're pulling air through the boiler. All that air that's being pumped into the boiler is being pulled through the system. And then it exits via a 65 foot stack outside. Um, the stack has a light on it to warn aircraft, local aircraft, that the, uh, the presence of the stack. But theoretically, the trees are almost as tall as the stack. So you really don't have any worry with, with aircraft either. So once a day, once a day we have to rake down these grates, we have to open the door, shut the boiler down, and rake the bottom ash out. Um, the bottom ash has a lot of carbon in it, and any sand or dirt that would be on the wood, that's where it's gonna end up is in the bottom ash. So that's one of the system requirements that we rake these boilers down once a day. We're actually gonna do that here in just a few minutes. Um, again, the the ash comes up, it drops either into this barrel or that dumpster. Uh, the barrel's only on it right now because I'm not running the boiler. 
Uh, we're running number one, so we'll use that tipper, tipper dumpster for the bottom ash as well. And uh, we'll actually go ahead and, and rake that boiler down right now. So, once a day, I'm going to shut the boiler off. So I'm going to shut the wood feed off. Now shut the wood feed off for about three to five minutes, and that burns all the excess wood off the grate. And then when that process is done, then I'll actually shut the boiler down and uh, get the rake out, and I'll rake the boiler down. I'm going to put my PPE on because it's very, very hot. So. Uh, the fire jacket was donated by Monroe Fire Department. I used to be on the fire department down there, and when I needed a jacket, I went down to see the chief, and I said, do you have any old jackets kicking around? He said, absolutely. So he gave me Monroe Fire, <laughs> Monroe fire Department gave us the jacket. Just have to give it a minute for the, the bottom ash auger to pull the ash out of the boiler. And it takes a minute, so the whole process takes uh, five to ten minutes start to finish on a daily basis. So the ash that we produce here on a yearly basis is, a, is right around 40 ton per year. Um, which isn't really a whole lot of ash, uh, considering the amount of wood that we burn. So basically every two weeks, we take those tipper dumpsters that I showed you earlier, we can put three of them on this trailer, and we take the trailer to a farmer's field, and we just simply dump the ash over the edge of the trailer, and the farmer uses it. It's like a, it's like a lime substitute. Potash is like a lime substitute. It's very, very good for soil and soil pH. So the farmers love it. And we give it away because uh, we, we want to do the right thing and, and help the community and, and help the farmers. And so we give the product away to a farmer right now down in Monroe. Uh, Doug Gibson Farm down in Monroe gets our ash at the moment. And he has many, many acres. Um, so we, we see that as a viable solution for our ash for, for years to come. Um, the application rate is about a ton per acre. So if you have 30 acres of land, you can put 30 tons of ash on it. And that's about all you're going to get. Uh, and then three years later you could reapply uh, after you test your soil pH. Um, we have RMI down in uh, Holderness actually go to the farm and test the soil for pH levels because we don't want to harm the soil. Um, again, that's nothing that the state requires us to do. It's something that we feel is the right thing to do for the community and for the, for the soil and for the farmer. So we take the initiative and go ahead and have that soil pH tested. Uh, deliver the ash and then the farmer spreads it uh, at a rate of a ton per acre. I just want to point out one, one thing to the, to the audience. Look, looking right behind me, you, you see the uh, biomass plant and you look at the uh, stack. Uh, you need to keep in mind in the, in the winter on the real cold days, we, we don't like to refer to what's coming out of the stack as smoke. A lot of folks have, have asked us about that. 
And, and what it is, is it's really steam that's coming out of the stack. It's, it's um, not smoke. Wilton Regional Healthcare, as you will find out, spent a quarter of a million dollars on putting an electrostatic precipitator in the plant. And as a result, 99.9% .9 of the particulates are removed. So air emissions is, there's no smoke coming out of the stack. You, uh, you, can, you can rest assured that what you see coming out of the stack is steam produced from the heat and not smoke. So, so in, any, in any design of a facility, there's always some changes that are made. And a lot of the changes that are made after the design of something like this is through the uh, employees. So as a credit to uh, some thinking outside the box from Littleton Regional Healthcare's facility employees, what you see behind me at, up at the ceiling is a heat recovery unit that was thought of during the construction project. The air intake that you see behind me is, is there in order to provide air for the combustible combustion that's required to burn the wood chips. That air that comes in when it's uh, minus 10 and minus 20 below zero, as you might know, is quite chilly, especially prior to us adding that piece of ductwork in the ceiling. Now that we have the ductwork up there, we're able to uh, gain, uh, we are able to temper the cold air coming in by recovering the heat loss up at the ceiling level of the biomass plant. What you see over to my left on the wall is also some creative thinking by the facilities department. The, uh, what, ha what we're doing there is we're also recovering, recovering thermal energy from the main, the main chamber of the biomass plant. And we're using that heat in, and we're pushing it into where we store the wood chips. The, um, as you know, wood chips, they come out of the truck that you, you'll see how wood chips are delivered shortly. But the, in the middle of winter when the truck comes, those wood chips are, are very cold and they're subjected to this environment right here. So in order to keep them from bunching up and become frozen balls of wood chips, we're able to heat this area by recovering the thermal energy and the, and the uh, re residual heat that the uh, boilers are emitting for the plant. So some creative thinking by the LRH facility staff in order to recycle heat that we're already manufacturing to temper the heat coming into the building and also to keep our wood chips warm. We, we hope that uh, you enjoyed your tour of the Littleton Regional Healthcare Biomass Plant. I would like to thank uh, Channel 2 for giving us the opportunity to share with the community uh, one of our success stories here at LRH and uh, hope to chat with you soon. Thank you very much.